Welcome to the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast, show 103. Welcome to a real world MBA from the School of Hard Knocks, where entrepreneurs reveal what it really takes to make it. Whether you're already in business or you're on your way there, this show is for you. This is Bigger Pockets Business. How's it going, everybody? I am Jay Scott. I am your co-host for the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast. Here again with the one, the only, the amazing Mrs. Carol Scott. How's it going today, Carol Scott? I'm doing really well, but oh my goodness, my mind is blown over all the new social media stuff. So I was already supposed to have figured out Facebook and Instagram or Insta or the gram or whatever you're supposed to call it and LinkedIn and Pinterest and like a million others. But one of my friends sent me this TikTok video that has like completely started this big snowball effect and made her company huge over the past little while. And now there's Clubhouse and there are all these crazy, amazing awesome things. And I've got to tell you, the people who invent these platforms are amazing, incredible people. I don't know how I personally will ever figure out how to use them all. But wow, people are absolutely amazing. And we have so many incredible tools at our disposal if we choose to use them. My mind is totally blown. For everybody out there listening and not watching this, I know Carol sounds like she's 130 years old, but she's really not. She's just technolo- <laughs> she's just technologically challenged. <laughs> but social media is kind of an important component of our episode today. We have a guest on who's he's he's really cool. His name is Mitchell Levy, and he is an expert in get this credibility. He is an expert in how we can be more credible in our personal lives and our business lives. He is a TEDx speaker. He's an international best-selling author. He's written over 60 books. He's published through his uh, various publishing companies many hundreds of books. And he's the founder, he's the founder of a group called Credibility Nation. And his goal in life is he is a thought leader. I'm not sure if I can use that word after this conversation, but basically he's a thought leader in the idea of credibility. And on today's episode, he talks to us about credibility itself, why it's important, how it's defined. A lot of us think about how credibility is defined, but he actually redefines credibility in a way that's important for us as business owners to ensure that we can create credibility in our business, in our lives. He talks to us about how we can build credibility. He even jumps into my LinkedIn profile about three quarters of the way into the episode, and he starts critiquing my LinkedIn profile, telling me the things that I can do to be more credible on social media. It's a really fascinating discussion and I think you're going to get a ton out of it. If you want to learn more about the things we discuss on this episode, check out our show notes at biggerpockets.com slash bizshow103. That's biggerpockets.com slash bizshow103. Okay, without any further ado, let's welcome Mitchell Levy to the show. Mitchell Welcome to the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast. I've got to tell you what, ever since Jay had his first interaction with you, he has not stopped talking about you. He's like, oh my goodness, we are going to have the best discussion with Mitchell about Credibility Nation. So we are so looking forward to chatting with you. And I personally can't wait to hear what all the hype is about. So thank you for being here today. All right, you're welcome. Hopefully it's not hype, it's just whatever reality is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Mitchell, I'm really excited for this conversation. And so you have an amazing background. You've done a whole bunch of different things. You've been a TEDx speaker. You've written literally dozens of books. You've published hundreds of books. You started multiple companies. You now have a, 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 well, we'll get into it, uh, Credibility Nation. But basically, most of what you've done has been around one topic, this idea of credibility. Can you take us back through your your uh, your story and basically talk about where you came from, what you've done, and kind of what led you to wanting to become and actually becoming an expert and, and a thought leader in this idea of credibility? I've been in Silicon Valley for 35 years. 
And the last time I actually worked for somebody else was I was I was working for Sun Microsystems and I left I left Sun in 1997. Now, if you're remembering 1997, that was that was sort of close to the beginning of the dot com days. And when we were at Sun, I was at Sun for nine years. And so we were using Internet technology before the world pretty much knew. It's when Mark Andreessen came up with Mosaic that we actually understood there was a World Wide Web. And so we were using internet technologies before then. And so when I, I hung up the shingles, I called myself a e-commerce, at the time e-commerce was cool. So IBM spent a billion dollars making e-business the name versus e-commerce. So I hang up my shingles, I call myself a e-commerce consultant, helping companies figure out what does it mean to use the internet. And my first job was, it was, it was one of my old bosses at Sun and he goes, Mitchell, do you know anything about SEO? And I go, I go, no, I, I don't, I don't actually know anything. But if you want me to learn, he says, listen, we're a web development firm. My people are completely booked. I don't want to spend any of my people's time learning about SEO. If you can learn about it, come back to me in a couple of weeks and tell me what we should charge our clients. So in 1997, it was very easy to buy everything that you could on what is SEO and how to do it and how to make it work. So I bought everything. I came back two weeks later. And I said. How about this? Uh, you should charge your clients fifteen thousand. Um, I'll charge you ten, and uh, and he he didn't. That was basically the conversation. We sold five, and that was the start of my company. Now, Jay, what was interesting to me, because uh, you talk a lot about how do you start off as an entrepreneur, I, I was originally thinking SEO was beneath me, and I I don't mean this for anyone who does this today. I just it just I, I want to do strategic stuff, high level. What happened, though, is on all five clients, I'd ask a simple question to start. And I'd say, can you give me your, at the time, your 30-second elevator pitch? All five people took 10 minutes. And at that time, the people I was talking to was either the chief marketing officer or the, or the, the CEO. All, all five people took 10 minutes. I go, oh. I potentially have strategic consulting. Two of them became strategic clients in addition to what I did. So, so this kind of led you into credibility, but you, you didn't stop there. You went and you speak about credibility and you write about credibility and you run Credibility Nation. What, what led you to say, this is the one area that I'm going to focus on as opposed to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about credibility, but I'm also going to keep doing SEO or I'm going to start this company or that. like you, you've cut, you've kind of made this your life mission. At, I hadn't really picked up on credibility in that topic as is that word until 2019. Sorry. Right, yeah. 2019. And at Sun, I was, uh, I'm sorry, post-Sun, when I was doing my, my, uh, my company, and, and the company was called EC Now for e-commerce now, so ecnow.com. So when I was doing that, I was the guy that would actually go around to CEOs and VP of operations, and I'd say, you know, there's this new technology coming about, and it will help us understand how do we talk directly to clients, and our subcomponent manufacturers are going to ship product directly to our clients I actually was walked out of the office in a number of companies, right? So I, doing the e-commerce stuff, I ran four conferences for the largest IT conference at the time, which is Comdex. I created four executive business programs at local Silicon Valley universities. I was asked to join a board of a public company. So I was on the board of a public company for nine years. I ran four CEO networking groups. And in 2005, I started a book publishing company. So at the time, it was the, the term that everyone was using, the term that I was comfortable with was thought leadership. So since I started my, my e-commerce company, it was very quick that was important was to be a thought leader. And, and the definition today that I have a, a thought leader is significantly different than it was back then. But I, I was doing thought leadership for a long time. When I started the publishing company, what I recognized is I wanted to be on a trend that was changing. And as Amazon was helping to democratize, say that five times fast, um, <laughs> the, the publishing industry, I just wanted to be part of that. So we've published over 750 books. I've written 65 myself. And what, what's interesting is I, 
I the model was going. I was using very similar to. Uh, um, it wasn't a hybrid publisher yet. It was simply very similar to the New York publishers, just friendlier. So I wasn't charging for publishing. Uh, people would come along. I'd publish their books, and and I did that between 2005 and 2017. That business model. My first TED Talk was at the end of 2017. If you just Googled Mitchell Levy TED Talk, you could find that. And that was on the book Being Seen, or actually it was on the topic Being Seen and Being Heard as a Thought Leader. And after I did the TED Talk, I'm like, wait, I need a book, <laughs> right? So, so that's when I wrote the book on that topic. Because uh, you know, how do you market a TED Talk, right? And what when you're thinking about a TED, what happens is, you need to think about what is an idea worth spreading. And so it can't be a commercial. Like you can't, you can't sell yourself when you're doing a TED Talk. So what's an idea worth spreading? So it got me thinking outside the box. And one of the things I realized is in my publishing business, I was serving the wrong audience. The audience I was serving were the people who wanted to write their own books. And by the time 2017 came along, if you still wanted to write your own books, that means you had enough time to write your books. It also, in many cases, meant that if, if you wanted to do it yourself, you felt like your stuff was so valuable that all you had to do was find a publisher, you didn't have to do any marketing, and the book would sell itself. And it turns out that's not really the audience I want to play with. I want to work with those people. And so what I started doing, I want to work with those people who are busy, successful. They don't have time to write. And so what I decided to do is in 2018, we became a done for you book writing and book publishing company. So nowadays for somebody who wants a book, we are four months after we start working together and I only need 10 hours of the author's time. We will ghostwrite, publish, distribute, and make them an Amazon bestselling author. In four months, did I hear that correctly? Wow. I didn't mean to derail you, but that is mind boggling. Go ahead. Four months. Wow. So what we do is on the inside, we have color. We also have QR codes and QR codes point to videos of the author talking about the sections. Now, because people don't really read books these days, the primary content of the book is 140 bite-sized quotes that are now easily shareable on social media. And so what ultimately happens is the author is getting uh, videos of talking about chapters. They're, they're getting 140 points to talk about. By the way, take three or four of them and now you have a new speech, okay? They're getting a book, both hardcover, paperback, color on the inside, Amazon bestseller, so we do that. And then as soon as we're done with the four month process, we then introduce to our external audio guys. We were having that conversation. That's why I'm wearing these. I'm, I'm wearing AirPods because because I normally don't with my mic. But what happens when when we introduce to our third party, these guys are fantastic, but they hear things like like a pin hitting the ground or just just to give you a visual. Um, the kitchen is 20 feet away when my wife would walk in the kitchen he would hear her walking, right? So, so what's interesting is, is you then get to read your audiobook, And then the other thing we do as part of that process is we take one of the sections of the book and turn it into a one hour course. So, because people don't monetize on book sales these days. What you're doing is you're taking a book, it is the credibility piece, it is that lead gen, it is that thing that opens the door and you don't necessarily, you wanna give away as many books as possible. However, you could monetize based on course sales. And so that's why we, we create the course as well. That, that makes perfect sense. And, and so, okay, so- We're still this, getting closer to credibility. I'm, 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 almost, yeah. I'm, almost, I'm almost at answering your question. So let me, Jay, let me answer your question. And then, and then you could ask questions and we'll just meander. So, sure. So in 2018, I ended up building a, um, a writing school. So we put our writers through it. And we had a number of clients, it's somewhere between 10 to 12 um, clients that we did the ghostwriting for in, 2000, in 2018. And at the beginning of 2019, I go, you know, I need to change my title. So I went to, my, well, I went to Miami, one of my friends there runs a branding place. And, and I ultimately came up with the title Global Credibility Expert. And having done thought leadership out of Silicon Valley for 25 years, I felt comfortable with that title. 
But two months after I had the title, I woke up one morning with a Napoleon Hill moment. I woke up and I just thought, Napoleon Hill, 500 millionaires, think and grow rich. And we now see an entire industry of people who are focused on that think and grow rich. And I just thought, Mitchell Levy, I'm going to interview 500 thought leaders on the concept of credibility. And I know I'll do a book, but I didn't know what would come out of it. And so that's where credibility really became a focal point, a word for me. So it took me a little over a year to interview 500 thought leaders. I finished the interviews in August. It was somewhere around July that I had this massive aha moment. Is we, as a society, we've been taught wrong. Almost everything we do in business, your guys' show is is much more on par with what I see, but... If you're going to school, because you guys have kids, when you send your kids to school, the academic system in the United States and mostly around the world today is designed to produce people to be sheep to go into companies and work for them for the rest of their lives. The academic system is designed around the industrial age. And that's not where, by the way, we are in the industrial age today, but that's not where we need to be, right? So with smart entrepreneurial parents, you guys will make sure you do the the, the side things they, your, your kids need to know to be successful, right? And so let me give you a couple stats that came out of, so this is in the book of the 500 people, 2% of the people who signed up for interviews have no integrity. So they signed up for an interview and they didn't show up and didn't say why before or after. Now, you guys might say, because you're podcasting, oh, Mitchell, that's normal, or those numbers are pretty good. Let me just say to you, that is not normal. It is not normal to schedule your time in an appointment with somebody else where you're taking their time and not show up. That is just not acceptable, period. 4% of the people are rude. So I have a live interview. 4% of the people come after the hour for a live interview, right? So think about this. You're being interviewed by the global credibility expert on your credibility, and you think it's credible to come after the hour for a live show. And I just go, my, I, I, I got my hands in the air like, I, I don't get it, <laughs> right? Overall, 23% of people were late. Now, I consider late coming within three, if you're doing a live show, within three minutes because the host is already panicked. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, the last two stats. When people would come into the green room, I'd get to know them, I'd make them feel comfortable. And after the interview, I'd go back to their web presence. I'd see what they looked like online. I'd see what they looked like in their LinkedIn profile. 80% of the people who I really liked had a really shitty online presence. And what I mean by shitty, not that it looked ugly or wasn't, it didn't show who they were. And, and what I'll say is, and the, the last stat's the most important, and that is, 98% of the people I interviewed needed clarity on who they served and the pain point they addressed. 98%. And Jay, I see you shaking your head. Yes, the, the question becomes, why is that? Like, how could, how could, I mean, 98% means basically we're not taught how to have clarity. And, and what they're, when I do the interviews, I have five questions. The first question I always ask is the one that 98% pe people needed help with. And what would happen if you sign up for an interview with us, we actually send you a 13-minute video on how to prepare. The first question is, what is your CPOP? What is your customer point of pain? And what I'm looking for as a CPOP is I'm looking for something that is one to 10 words, one to three seconds. It's short enough that it's memorable. If it's memorable, it's shareable and the question is, or the statement itself should beg the question, tell me more. So my CPOP is humans that want to be seen as credible. It's both a pain point and an aspiration point. So somebody who came in yesterday is one of two people in the last four months who walked in with their CPOP, otherwise everyone else needed support. His was creating successful marketing funnels by both a pain point and a, and a success point. The, the other person who, who I, I really adore, are you ready for this? Hourly billing, right? So somebody who does value-based pricing. And so a CPOP of hourly billing, like it's short, it's memorable. And, and you guys, what do you mean hourly billing? 
Well, you know, it's trading time for dollars. It's better to do value-based billing versus hourly billing. So, so what I'd say for you guys to think about is what are your CPOPs? And, and what it ultimately comes down to is the credibility you bring to the table is, is the respect that you have for other people by being clear and crisp of who you are and how you serve. Yeah. And, and so I guess I was going to, that was going to be my next question. Certainly sir, some of the things you're talking about there goes to the traditional definition of credibility, showing up late, not showing up at all for an interview that reduces your credibility. You look at these people and you say, these are people I don't want to do business with. But then when you start talking about things like not understanding your value proposition, not understanding what your customer's point of pain is, those don't typically think of me as lowering credibility. It thinks of me as lowering the likelihood I might work with somebody, but I, the, the word that comes to mind wouldn't necessarily be credibility. So it sounds like what we're doing here is we're we're redefining credibility to some extent. Can you talk to us about what that definition of credibility is that, that you think about when you use the term? Very insightful, Jay. So if we look at the dictionary today, the definition of credibility is the quality of which you are trusted. So basically, trust and credibility is, in, in quarter, according to the dictionary, the same. And it's not. That's only one third accurate. Now, particularly in real estate, there are three words other than location, location, location that are used all the time. The three words is we do business. And then as an entrepreneur, we do business with those we know, like, and trust. So credibility is the quality in which we're known, the quality which we're likable, and the quality in which we're trusted. And so on trust and under each of those, so I have 10 components that go under each of those. And, and under trust, we'll do that first. It's authentic, being vulnerable, having integrity. One of the components that are also under trust is being coachable. You ever bump into that person who knows it all and they're not coachable? Guess what? That's, that's some, like, would you trust somebody who knows everything? And the answer is nah, probably not. Now, when I talk about being known, it's not that I know of you, it's that I know you, right? So the first component of being known is, is servant leadership. It's having the desire to serve others. If you're interacting with somebody and you see them and all they care about is their self-serving versus selfless, it's, once again, that affects your credi their credibility. If all they care about themselves, you don't know what the answers are. Uh, the other, there are three other components in, in terms of being known. It's having the intent and commitment to do the right thing. So we have to decide, you know, now what does the right thing mean? And, and that's open-ended and I will define that further. And then also integrity is one of those words that I use twice. And so integrity is 20% of value. Authenticity is only one. And so integrity is also into being known. And then we'll give you one more, give you the being likable. What's nice is actually... Sometimes people say, well, how can I be likable? What do I need to do to be likable? I, I actually now have a definition. There are two components. One is sharing your stage. You guys are doing that by having this platform or multiple platforms where you're bringing people on. Sharing your stage means that there's a term I love. I introduced into the marketplace called cred dust. Cred dust is that, is that sparkle that happens when you share somebody else's ideas, thoughts, or actions. So we've been taught as part of the industrial age, we've been taught as a thought leader that we should know it all, stand on top of the mountain and shout out. That's opposite to, to what it should be. What it should be is you're standing at the same level as everyone else and you're bringing about other people's ideas, thoughts, and actions and giving them credit for it. So spreading cred dust is one of those things that's helpful of A, being likable. And the second is what we already talked about. And that is showing the respect to other people by showing up when you show up. That means coming early, being prepared and coming with your heart. So Mitchell, take a step back for us, right? You talked about just like in real estate, the three words that matter are location, location, location. You talked about in business, we do people that we know like in trust, right? And that's where credibility comes in. So can you talk with us as business owners and as entrepreneurs on just some of the really, you know, you talk, you're speaking about 
giving an elevator pitch, talking about why things are important, where our points of pain are, and so on. Why do we, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, need to make credibility a front and center initiative in our business in order to be successful? Why is it important? Let's, uh, let's add to that. If you want to be successful in life, you need to be make credibility part of your life. Right? It's the way credibility is defined. And I did a TED talk in January that will be out in April. It is focused on credibility. And it is probably actually let me say it is the best thing I've ever done to date so far. Like I was gonna say my I really love the book Credibility Nation. I that's of the 65, it's it's my favorite book because of what it means and what it's doing. When I think about the TED Talk, it's a step further because it's 16 minutes in a platform people understand that has credibility, the TED platform. And and it would what it does is it shows A, what is the definition of credibility? But the first thing it does, it shows that life has gotten worse since the two of you were born. Over the last couple of decades, we have entered, by the way, I call the opposite of credible dubious. So over the last couple of decades, dubiousness has entered more and more and pervaded society more and more. And I then go ahead and share the updated definition of credibility. And at the same time, I share the definition of humanity. And what I do towards the end of the TED Talk is what I demonstrate is that if we want to be more humane, if we want to make this a better world, not just for ourselves, but for our kids and their kids, all we have to do is act credibly because that will bring back our humanity. And so that's what the TED Talk does. So if I'm going to shortly answer your question, What's really cool about the word credibility is if you're credible, that means you're not a different person at home or a different person with friends or a different person with business or different persons with partners. You're that same human that's coming across. You're that person who people can rely on. They could trust. You have the integrity. They have the authenticity to do the right thing. You have the intent and commitment to focus on the things that matter to you, which by definition should matter to your clients. And with your CPOP, it's not your elevator pitch with your CPOP, that customer point of pain, that represents your purpose. So you can be a better human helping to contribute to society while also running a business. And you don't have to make any pretenses. You don't have to do anything. You, you just need to be you. And we've been taught to be somebody else when we go to business. And that's silly. You just need to be yourself. And now, if you don't like yourself, that's something else. (laughs) Yeah, that, that, I mean, that really resonates with me. And, and I like that. Something you said, and, and I've heard you say this on other podcasts. And and so I'd love to have you repeat it here for our listeners, because I think this is valuable. You've talked about the idea that credibility starts with clarity. And so can you talk to us a little bit about the relationship between credibility? I mean, we, again, we now have a good definition for credibility. I think we all know what clarity means. How is, how is clarity a path to credibility? If you know your, well, actually, let me do two things. First, let me answer the question. And then let me give you how to deploy it. Answering the question, if you're not clear of who you are and who you serve, you're not clear as a person, if you don't have clarity, then you end up losing people who may want to interact with you. You ever been to any of these meetings now, nowadays on Zoom where everyone gets like 30 seconds or a minute to say who they are? And then somebody yeah. goes for three or four minutes and you're like, oh my God, he wasted everyone else's time? Like, <laughs> yes, absolutely. What I have to tell you is people get so excited about who they are and what they need to say, but where you're not recognizing think about the pillar being like, you are disrespecting the people in the room. You're disrespecting the host. If the host gives you a minute and you take two, okay, you get away with it once, but you get away with, do it two or three times, you will not get invited back to the party, right? And so what happens is people keep talking because they haven't been able to clearly articulate what they wanted to say. And so they keep talking. Eventually, they stumble on it, kind of like I did in answering your question. Uh, it's just we happen to be on radio, so I have a little bit more time to play around. Um, 
So clarity is important because you know exactly what you need to say. And what I think the, the way I like to do it, what's, what's, what's actually in the book, is that the first, first words out of your mouth is your CPOP. Like if you said, Mitchell, tell me who you are. What do you do? Uh, I serve humans that want to be seen as credible. Well, if you have any interest in me or humanity at all, you're going to say, what do you mean? You're giving me permission. So what do I say next? What I say next is typically the what do they want, right? So and in terms of what that, so I want to hit somebody in the head, like, what do you want, right? So if I've talked to them ahead of time, I might say something about the book, or I might say something about the cred reel, or I might say something about the fact that don't you want your kids to grow up in a world that's better tomorrow than it is today? And they're going to say, yes, tell me more. Now I've got two or three minutes where I can talk about what does that mean and why they should be part of the community called Credibility Nation, right? So what happens if you could, if you could be clear and start off at a small site, then you're given permission to continue to do that conversation and to go further. Does that make sense, Jay? It absolutely does, um, but I guess that leads me into the the natural question. You, you've you've done a good job of of leading me down this path. So I want a better world for my kids. So how does Credibility Nation and what you're doing today lead us down that path? Talk to us a little bit about that. So imagine if you can go to a place where the people who are there are people who you could get to know, like, and trust quickly. People who are there are people who do follow through with their word. They have that integrity and authenticity that they really are who they say they are. And the, the downside is those people who end up acting dubiously will eventually be ejected out of Credibility Nation. So you can actually go to a place where you can meet the type of people who really are like yourself. We've got a pledge and the pledge is what, what is sort of the foundation. So I pledge to live credibly every day without hate in my life. I strive to be a good human and make this a better planet for myself, my family, for other people's families in this generation and the next. When you think about what that means, it's a place where you can go to where there's no hate and where there is the desire to serve others, servant leadership. Now, there could always be dislike. So let me tell you about something going on in the world today, like right now, that just is killing me. And I, I can't believe this happens. If you're a Democrat or a Republican and you're strong on one side, your view of the world is so different and many of them hate each other. Like we're Americans, right? We're, we live on this, we live in this planet. We, we live in this country. We should be able to have a conversation, but it's, it's right or wrong. It's, it's heaven or hell. It's, it, it, so we need to get to a point where we can have conversations that are based on uh, a level of, of understanding of respect as opposed to conversations based on hate. And so how is Credibility Nation going to help? The, the benefit is being educated. Like, for instance, for people who come late to a podcast, maybe they just don't know better, right? Maybe they've never been educated. Um, for, and think about everything else that, that people do that are not part of credi credibility. It's, I look at it as... Um, and, and this was a big part of the TED Talk, is I actually mentioned that my first boss out of business school, I, I originally thought he was just with me for 13 years, but he was actually with me for 36 years, even though uh, I actually stayed with him for only a year. The last lesson that I learned from him was blame, which is a dubious lesson, right? And What's interesting is, hey, how do we educate each other? How do we help each other? And then what's happening with the community, and here's the cool part, because you guys should think about this, is we're creating villages. And so a village, so for the same $10 a month, you could be in a village. So imagine being in a village of people who are interested in real estate investing. 
And so if people join the village of real estate investing and they're paying 10 bucks a month, they get all that base functionality of credibility. And then guess what else happens? You and I split profit 50-50. And so it's a way in which you can communicate and build a village of people, of like-minded people who are interested in the same topic you guys have. Super. So this concept of these different villages within Credibility Nation is very cool to hear about, especially in the context of just being a good human overall in doing things respectfully, treating other people the way they need to be treated, and just living a good life so that we can just create a better future for all of these generations that are going to follow us. But let's talk about the types of things we can start doing today. For example, when, when we were chatting before the show, I think you'd mentioned that in your research, you've looked at several thousands of LinkedIn profiles, for example, right? So what are the types of things that where you can tell how somebody is credible within a LinkedIn profile or within their online presence? What are those, what are the, the green lights and what are the red flags that we should avoid so that we can make sure we are credible in telling our story with clarity. And and so what I'd say is when you go to somebody's LinkedIn profile, what's the first thing you see? So it's at the top of the page. Uh, do they have a good picture of themselves or not? Do they have a really fuzzy picture? Do they have no picture? No picture at all. I just go away. Um, do they have a picture with them and a bunch of people? So anyhow, what is the picture you see? Um, what is their tagline. What do they actually say? I want to read in the tagline. I want to read their CPOP. I want to read. I, I want to be able to figure out really quickly who they serve. And then behind that image, uh, a number of people use the standard imaging at the back of LinkedIn. You, you can put in an image there. And on the image you put there, you want to reinforce your CPOP. Right? So, what you want to do, the first thing you say, like, so for instance, if I went to your guys' LinkedIn and I didn't do that, I just went to your website, and your primary focus is real estate investing, that's what I want you to reinforce. I, I get there and you're reinforcing. And particularly since you do this as a, as a couple, by the way, really cool to do business together that way, I want to see that, right? I want to see that what you're promoting, the values you stand for and who you are. And I, if I could see that in the first five or 10 seconds, that would help. Now, let me tell you how I would reinforce it. The reinforcing would happen when, when you then scroll to the bottom of your LinkedIn profile and you see where people have endorsed you. What's really interesting is, is when I'm looking at somebody and they, they say something up top but then you go to the bottom, like what if you, you see those people with 7,000 uh, followers and they go to the bottom and they have 10 people who said they did WordPress, phony account. And then this, the thing I do right after that, so that's, that's the easy, right? And you want that, uh, LinkedIn has a number of 99, you wanna be at 99 plus, right? The, and, and you pick three, by the way, you get to choose the three you wanna pick. The three you pick should reinforce your CPOP. And, and we'll do one more. And that is, I then, if I'm really curious about the person, I'm going to go in and read their endorsement. So I typically want to see that they've been, that they've got endorsed 15 times and they've given, or recommendations, that they've, they've got 15 recommendations and they've given 15 recommendations. And if you really want to know about somebody before you talk to them, read the language they used in how they recommend others. Because those are the, that's the languaging that's relevant to them. And if you're, if you're interested in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, if you read the way other people talk about others, if you use that in your languaging, they'll get to see you in a different light. I think that is so powerful, right, Jay? I'm sitting there thinking about... Yes, it is so true when you consider things that people have said about you. Additionally, though, I think it 
it it rings even more loudly and clearly when you think about the language that you use to give testimony to others. It really does give you that much of a deeper insight into a person. So I think that's really, really cool. So I'm curious, Mitchell, Jay has a a much more engaging, I guess, online presence, if you will, than I do. Um, in a, a kind of my value proposition, I guess, in addition to running our businesses, I am very much in, um, an unashamedly, unabashedly CEO of my household, and my boys are 10 and 11, and focus a significant amount of time and energy on, on uh, raising the kids in addition to our business. And we have chosen as a family to kind of make sure that Jay is front and center in the running the business. And so as far as his credibility online, I'm curious of little things that you may have noticed about just from things that you've learned over all these years and doing these interviews in these tips and everything that you teach in Credibility Nation. Are there examples of things that Jay has done specifically that have boosted his credibility? Or are there things that you're seeing, for example, that Jay, and of course, I mean this by other listeners out there that may be in similar situations, could be doing to boost their credibility? What I've seen so far, I'm okay. He's digging into my LinkedIn profile. I was, I, I just realized I needed to turn on, thank you. I need to, I, I, I need to put my glasses <laughs> on so I could go into your LinkedIn profile and learn a little bit more. Jay, you okay with me just sort of? Um... Absolutely. Okay. I'm an open book. Help me. The backdrop you have, like when I first get there, here's what I see. The picture of you, I wouldn't mind seeing a picture with a smile versus sort of just a half thing. It's not a bad picture at all. So I, you don't need to change it. I just, the, the way you come across is a little bit happy. That, that picture looks a little frumpy. I love the picture of the two of you uh, doing the podcast. Um, and I think, I think that's perfect. And then when I'm reading the book titles, I'm getting a, an impression that you guys are expert at real estate. Okay. What, What's missing when I look at the what you wrote, you you wrote entrepreneur, investor, author, and speaker. I don't know what that means, right? I, it's not okay. encouraging me to do anything. I mean, I, I obviously, I, kn I know what those words mean, but there's no call to action. There's nothing here that says why I should reach out to you or not reach out to you. So I kind of want to see a C-pop there. Like, what are you personally interested in? Right, and we could we could work on that uh, if you want. We could use this time to work on that. Let me just go to the bottom and see what 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 it says. So I'm just going to the bottom, and now the bottom says that you have skills and endorsements for product management, strategy, and management. I have no idea what. So there's a disconnect to me between what I see up top and what I see at the bottom. So there's nothing that that says that. And then you've received one recommendation and given four. So I would, the, the thing that I'd say is I would, I would definitely beef up the recommendations. I'd figure out what skills and endorsements you want to be known for and make that uh, enhance or reinforce what goes up top, what your CPOP is. The only other thing I'd suggest when I look at your, your, your stuff you're missing the important elements, and that is, since you do podcasts and videos, you should incorporate podcasts and videos to reinforce the the things that you're working on. I absolutely that love this. Thank you. This is great. Well, oh, you're welcome. I had to ask this because I think what you were alluding to when you were talking about the types of things that we can be doing to beef up our credibility online is, I think often people just list their credentials, but they don't tell us what we should do with them or why those credentials matter or can make the life better of the person on the receiving end. Isn't that right? What many people make the mistake of thinking is that LinkedIn is your online resume. And that is just purely a mistake. You, you don't even let that happen. Think of LinkedIn as the search engine optimized landing page for what you want to do, right? So it's a search engine optimized yep. landing page for what you do. So if you have a CPOP, a customer point of pain, and that's highlighted everywhere, 
And now let's make it much more fun. If your CPOP is also your passion, right? If your CPOP represents your passion and purpose in life, and then you go into your LinkedIn profile and you optimize it around, what, you, what are you doing? You're magnetizing your purpose. You're magnetizing your compass. When if, if Jay, if I stumbled upon your site, the LinkedIn profile first, I'd throw you in the same camp with, I, I don't see any of the heart that I see with this. And particularly with your better half on the line, right? Significant sure. heart, right? And I don't see any of that. I, I might see the two of you and I go, oh, that's unique. Like that one picture that the two of you used, that that would probably be the one thing that would stand out when I looked at your LinkedIn. But everything else, I don't get it. Got it. That makes yes, perfect sense. And I think that's that's really helpful in showing us the types of things that are not even difficult things to do, but that can really boost our authenticity and clarity and make sure that people realize what type of value we can deliver to their lives. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you got it. <laughs> awesome. I want to talk a little bit about so you you talked earlier about you've written 70, 80, 85 books, was it? Your company has published hundreds and hundreds more. And you've talked about using books as a tool for credibility. And I, I love that idea. And I'm seeing that a whole lot more these days where people um, are, are basically, when you have a book and you can hand somebody a book, this basically says, I'm not a fly by night in whatever it is I'm doing. Nobody's going to write a book if, if they're basically in that business for a month or two. It basically says, hey, now you know where to find me. So it basically sends the message that I'm not going to scam you. It's not something that, that I'm going to hand you this book and then I'm going to take your money and run. It, it's great. Are there other things besides writing a book that can really boost somebody's credibility, big things like other than just focusing on your LinkedIn profile um, or, I mean, you've given TED Talks. So clearly that's something. What are some other big things that we can do that can really, um, if our goal is to, to massively increase our credibility over the next 6, 12, 24, 36 months, what are some big things we can be doing and thinking about doing? So let me, let me answer your question in a way that you didn't expect. Your question says, how do I get to be more known in the marketplace? And... Mm -hmm what I'd say is that's not the first question to ask, right? So the first question, because you can't be credible externally until you're credible internally. So who are you? How do you show up? How, who, like, Carol, the fact that you said that I'm the CEO of the household is, and we've made a conscious decision to run the family that way, and I still help my husband in his business, and of course have your own personality, right? That is, that relationship, that conversation that we're, we're, we're discovering online, God, I kind of want to see that online, right? I, I want it, that, because that's, that's part of your credibility. That's part of what you two bring to the table together as, as a couple in this business that you're doing, right? So the, the first thing I'd say is you, you got to figure out who you are and who you serve and how best you serve them. And that's really the, the, the credible part is, is figuring out, like, I, I, it's hard not to say CPOP because it really is, uh, it's, it's what is your focus? What is your purpose? People hear that and they go, oh, I don't know, that's, that's, that's fluffy stuff. Okay, don't worry about for purpose and focus. By the way, it is, it is not fluffy. Um, but if the, the best thing I say is, let's say you and I were on the phone and I'll take a half hour conversation with anyone. Getting the second half hour is harder. So I've got a calendar-based system. In 2018, I saved three weeks of my life by having people book time on the calendar versus scheduling the time manually. And so lots of times people get on the call with me and I don't know exactly why when I look at their profile. I don't know exactly why we're talking. So the first thing I'll say is, what is a good outcome of this conversation? And those people with clarity will give me a good outcome. Okay. And so if, if you want more credibility, first, make sure you have it internally. Second, if you have it internally, you, you, you have a much better understanding of where do you need to be known more. 
right? There's it. It's interesting to me when I think about real estate and real estate investing. Would you do real estate investing in Saudi Arabia? Probably not. So you don't need to be known in Saudi Arabia, right? If it, depending on who you are and where, like if you have a carpet cleaning service, well. Maybe your state and local states, you need to be known, but you don't need to be known around the world. You don't need to be known around the U.S., right? And so what happens is when we think about this word thought leader, what, what people think about is, oh, I need to be known around the world so I can stand on the stage and everyone wants to buy my stuff and be me. And, you know, that, that's an outdated concept. So if you want to be credible, who is the audience you serve? And then you need to go after that audience. So depending on who it is, so so the basic stuff, uh, Carol, as you mentioned, go to the places where your audience is going to be looking. You know, depending on who, what you're doing, um, and particularly if it's real estate investing, they're going to look on LinkedIn. Uh, dude, beef up your LinkedIn profile. Not that hard to do the stuff we need to do. It's not that it's bad. It's, it's that it doesn't show you, right? It'd be in that 80% of people that you just, don't show up the way you actually are when you interact with you immediately, okay? That's kind of easy. Well, where else do, if, if it is real estate and investing, where else are those people hanging out? Where else do you need to have a presence? And what do you need to do to get that presence there, right? Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's, it's energy. Some, you know, it could be writing, could be speaking. Um, it, it could be being a sponsor, you know, being in a place where it's it's a magazine that because of COVID, they're having a hard time surviving. Hey, can I sponsor this for you? And you get you make your awareness known there. There there are there are many different ways to be known as you're getting your brand out. Right. The the best in, in today's world, though, one of the best ways is that word of mouth marketing. And how do you get people to talk about you? Oh, they see you and then you make it easy for them to share you. Is that what, real quick, Jay, I know we need to jump into four more because of our time, but I just have to follow up on that super quick. Is that what that cred dust is about, like making it easy for people to share you and sprinkling information about about you to other people in the right circles, in the correct places where your audience and the people that matter are going to be looking? Yes. We do this all the time. The people who are good at what they do, they, they naturally will talk about other people. It's just I want to put a word to it and and put and, and put brownie points on it. Like, hey, you should do this. It'll be helpful for you. Cool. Love that. Absolutely love it. Okay. Well, we are about an hour into this episode. So I think it's time to jump into the final segment that we call the four more. And that's where we ask you the same four questions that we ask all of our guests. And then the more part of the four more, uh, we'd love to have you tell our listeners where they can connect with you and find out more about you. I'm going to take question number one. Mitchell, what was your very first or your very worst, I'll let you pick, job, and what did you take from it that you're still using today? The first job I did what many people do as young uh, little sort of entrepreneurs, I, anything I could do to make money, right? So when you're young, it's, it's, it's lawns, cleaning houses, babysitting, as soon as I could, uh, busboy, waiter, right? All of those. Uh, but I, I, I'll do the worst job. The worst job is in high school, I wanted to make money and I ended up finding a, and I was, I, I've always been a night owl. So I find a factory that, that you could do an eight hour shift at night. So I'd finished school and I, I did it one day and I just, because <laughs> it basically was you're standing in a line and you're doing the same thing over and over, like no thinking, just mechanically. And that's not me. I just, I'm, I can't. And, and it's the world in which everything is structured around, but it's it's definitely not me. Cool. Okay, I'm taking the second question, and that is, Mitchell, what is the single best piece of advice that you have for entrepreneurs or small business owners that you haven't yet mentioned today that they can start doing in their life right now this minute? The The advice I would give and, and well, first, uh, join Credit Building Nation and take the course on going through life with a sponsorship mindset, because we should go through life with six simultaneous sponsors. 
And the sponsors that we're thinking about financial, uh, spiritual, credibility, awareness, accountability, right? And there's one that's missing and I, I, I could never get all six when I think it through. But what happens is if you go through life with multiple sponsors, uh, whether or not you want to call them sponsors or partners or mentors or whatever you want to call them, if you go through life that way, what's interesting is it, it allows you to focus on that particular area that will get you to the next level. And, and, and we need that. It, it, it's, uh, we often think that we should have one sponsor, one mentor, or be a sponsor or be a mentor. And, and those are great. But thinking about having six, potentially at the same time, six different ways to learn and grow and being very focused, pretty powerful. Love it. Love it. Okay. Question number three. You clearly know your books. You've written dozens of them. You've published hundreds of them. For our listeners out there, what is the best book that you've read that is probably not the most common book out there for our our listeners who are business owners, entrepreneurs, and 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 want to learn and grow? I'll give you I'll give you two. Uh, I, I'll give you one which is external, and one which is internal. The internal, you know, I have to say, Credibility Nation. This book, Credibility Nation, my sixty fifth book, absolutely will rock your world if you read this. the The book that I like to reference back as an entrepreneur. It's, I think it's 20-ish years old uh, by a guy named Jeffrey Cox, and it is called Selling the Wheel. I always thought that there was one type of salesperson, and what he did is he broke the world into four different types of salespeople, and depending on the situation you're in, you need a different style salesperson based on... So it, it gave me a, a, a view of the world that I just hadn't really seen before, so that, that Selling the Wheel is a really great book. Excellent. Thank you for those recommendations. Okay. And here is my final and fun fourth question. What is something along the way, Mitchell, we love asking this of entrepreneurs, that you have splurged on along the way, whether it's for your work life, whether it's for your home life, a material thing, or an experience, a splurge that was totally and entirely worth it? So what I'll say is when... During the dot-com days, I was working seven days a week, as many hours as sort of one was awake. And my son was born. And when he was about a year, year and a half old, I went to my wife and I thought I should give her a present. So I was talking to my friends and I figured out uh, what the present should be. And, and, I, and I thought, well, I'll take every Sunday off and I'll spend it with my son. Now, I could see in your eyes, Carol, you're like, oh, that's not really a present. Well, that's exactly what my wife said when I said that to her. She goes, that's a present for you, honey. What about me? <laughs> and and I, I thought about it and I go, well, give me a minute. I just, I just, I, I, first of all, I was smacked in the side of the head. I'm like, really? And then, and by the way, she was right. That was a present for me, not for her. <laughs> of course. And I, you say, of course, but as a guy, I didn't know that. But of anyway. course, you're a guy. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly, by the way. <laughs> and so I thought about it and she loved going to Europe. She loved spending more time with me. And I said, well, listen, if you do the booking, I will take four to six weeks off a year and we'll go to some European city. And she didn't kind of believe me the first time we did it, but we've done that other than this year for 20 years in a row, we've, we've rented a house for four to six weeks and invite friends and family to Europe. And I don't, I can't say no to work. I just don't do biz dev. So existing clients I still interact with, but I, I it's, what's nice is it's family and friends first. And the experiences that we've delivered to some people who would, who would never have had a passport or my son who has experienced so many different European countries and thinks this is normal. <laughs> so awesome. that's been a beautiful, uh, I, I'm not even going to say splurge. It just seems like a normal way of life. Normal way of life. That's your lifestyle. It's awesome. I love it. Okay. So that was the four part of the four more. And now for the more part of the four more, can you tell our listeners where they can find out more about you, where they can find out more about Credibility Nation, where they can connect with you or anything else you want to tell us? Once again, for those watching live or before April of 2021, you can go to credibilitynation.com and sign up as a basic member for five bucks a month. Um, starting April 1st, it'll be 10 bucks a month. Well worth. It's probably more like 25 to 50 bucks a month. But for 10 bucks a month, you could join. It's just credibilitynation.com. 
Um, I ended up getting the um, the the trademark for Credibility Nation, so that's really cool. So I'm holding up the the uh, the trademark thing. And what I do want to say is my life mission is to tip the scale between those people that are credible and those people who are dubious. And we need to do this together. So I'd like to encourage you to it. So I'm holding up a picture of a scale where dubious nation is being held down and credibility nation is high. I'd like you to join and figure out how we can play together in credibility nation. Uh, for those that want to book time on my calendar, just go to MitchellLevy360.com and it'll connect to my social media sites and, and a, it has a direct calendar link there. So go to CredibilityNation.com or MitchellLevy360.com. Mitchell, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate all the amazing advice and the stories and the actual tips. Oh, my pleasure. You guys were great. I, I, love, the, I love the energy that I get when the two of you are in the room together. Uh, thank you. We appreciate that. <gasps> awesome. See you thank soon. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. How fun was that, Jay, when Mitchell just jumped right into your LinkedIn profile and was able to instantly pick up on a number of different items that you can truly just take a few minutes that will really boost your credibility online. I loved how it was just an interactive discussion and gave some great actionable tips, not only for you, but for so many people within our community that can take this low hanging fruit to make a big difference. Yeah. And he made me realize I need to figure out what my CPOP is. That's right. What is the value that I offer other people? I don't know. So I'm going to have to put some thought into that and update my social media. You have so much C-pop to me, baby. You know that. Thank Always you. Thank you. Forever. Thank you. You are my C-pop pop. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. All righty. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an awesome week. We will see you next week on the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast. She's Carol. I'm Jay. Now get some internal clarity and deliver some external value today. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. In.